Ali, Mogitim, Hafidei Zantiro, Rananim, Kaslele, Lengwo, and Yagwe. Welcome to another edition of the One Micronesia Show. And before we start, I want to say happy holidays from our family here at KOM to yours. So let's kick this show off. And for this one, a very, very special one for me because we had the opportunity to participate in Operation Christmas Drop this year, and it was amazing. So here we go. We start off with the push-up ceremony, and then we head on to the official Christmas Drop 2023. Hafdeh and Mogithin, I had the opportunity to take part in the world's longest running humanitarian mission, Operation Christmas Drop 2023. This year, there was air crews from Japan, Canada, Australia, Republic of Korea, the Philippines, joined the U.S. Pacific Air Forces to deliver holiday cheer and essential supplies to remote islands across the Micronesian region. It all kicked off with a push-off ceremony where there were dignitaries from both military, foreign, and local government. Operation Christmas Drop embodies the innocence and humanitarianism of the camaraderie. Operation Christmas Drop truly captures the Christmas spirit, delivering supplies, clothing, rice, fishing equipment, and toys to outer islands. And just like that, Operation Christmas Drop 2023 is a go. I boarded the C-130 for the first time in my life and was excited. As the bank ramp closes, we taxi off to the runway and off we go. Our mission took us about 400 miles south of Guam to our first two drops, which was to the island of Flalop in the Waliai Lagoon. One was a beach drop. And the other was to an airstrip, where fellow islanders were waiting to receive these amazing packages. And then to our last drop, which was to the island of Fatailab, all a group of islands of Yap State. Being on this mission means so much to me as not only a member of the media here in Guam, but also being from the island state of Yap. To have heard stories about it growing up to actually participating in it, this was such an honor and one that I will never forget. If I say this experience was amazing, it'd be an understatement because the opportunity to be on that plane, to see those gifts being dropped from above and see the Islanders on the ground just waiting to receive these gifts is such a very special moment, especially for me. We're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we will take you on the ground and show you footages from the Islanders receiving these gifts. We'll be right back. And we're back. The One Micronesia Show continues. So previously we showed you the push-up ceremony and the actual Operation Christmas Drop from the air, but now we go to the ground.
it's been a pleasure to share this moment with everybody who made this possible. We talk about the committee who put this together, the military, and to everybody who came together for this Operation Christmas Drop 2023. Thank you guys so much for your hard work, and we can't wait to see you guys on the next one. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more of the One Micronesia Show. And we're back. The One Micronesia Show continues. Recently, I had a sit down on the Zoom with none other than Talakai, a performer, an artist from Tonga who performed on The Voice. And here's that conversation. In season 24 of NBC's The Voice, along with having Guam's represented Kaylee Shimizu, there was also great representation from our Pacifica community. Meet Talakai. I'm from Sacramento, California, and I've been doing music since uh, I was about 10 and just continuing to, to follow my dreams and, and then just, you know, embracing every part of the journey. Talakai, whose roots are from Tonga, share how his love for music really flourished. And at that time, it was like Usher and like, you know, all the, the 90s type of R&B. Uh, I would always try to mimic their voices and try to sound like them. And then it was always like growing up around, you know, my, my family members that would sing as well. And it would just be, you know, an ongoing thing where I would just try to try to sing all the time. And in keeping with embracing every part of the journey, Talakai shares why it's been really important for him to connect with his Polynesian and Pacifica roots. Yeah, most of um, So for, for me, when I was growing up, I spoke the language like 100%. Like I was like my first language was uh, speaking Tongan. Um, unfortunately, I did go into foster care and, and I wasn't able to communicate with my family. So I kind of lost a little part of that with uh, with growing up. Um, and yeah, um, I just been trying to get back into my roots and and get back with, uh, you know, communicating with my Polynesian people and, and represent. And what better way to represent than taking the stage on NBC's hit show, The Voice, he had tried out for the show a couple times previously and didn't make the cut. And when he finally got the call to audition, he admits he was second guessing himself. I was like, you know what, life is too short. Might as well just, you know, put myself out there and and uh, see what happens. And so that's basically what happened. I just put myself out there and uh, yeah, I got to be able to get on the platform. And now there's people that are able to see me in my process and grow with me. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that. Talakai would catch the attention of John Legend, who would eventually become his coach. When he turned around, um, I was, it was just a surreal feeling. Like I was like, everything was, was full circle from that moment. I used to get that I looked like John Legend all throughout high school. And uh, it used to be a thing where they were like teasing me about it, but but it's kind of like full circle now because it, you know, it, it worked out in a way, so. Although his time on the show was cut short this season, this is just the beginning for this talented Pacifica artist. And if there was any message he would get out to those aspiring artists. A message to them would just be to, to believe in yourself and just follow your passion, follow your dreams and, and really just pursue what you, you know, what you really want to do in life. And I feel like that's what life is about is being, you know, open to to what could be like possible for you. Follow Talakai's journey and show him some love by following him on Instagram at Talakai Official. What an amazing talk we had with Talakai. Thank you so much for the time that you gave us to sit down and get to know you and get to know what you got in stores, what's next after the voice. We're gonna take a break and we'll back with more of the One Micronesia Show. One Micronesia show, and we're back to close it off with a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, recently, we've heard Simon Sanchez volleyball team on the headlines for not winning one but two titles. So here, we sit down with the girls of the team. It's the One Micronesia show, our December edition, and this is the one-on-one. -on -one. And with me today, I ha am, have the uh, honor of having these uh, young ladies on the show, super young and talented ladies on the show. I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves. So you guys can know who they are and we're going to get into our conversation. So we'll start with you and we'll go all the way down the line. Hi, I'm Brianna Samina. I'm Kena Ken Watto and I'm Hazel Durbai. Okay, so I have these three amazing individuals here and, you know, of course they're here and they're also part of a, a, a greater group who uh, accomplished so much this year. Not one, but two titles. Am I correct? First of all, I just want to say thank you and congratulations, first of all. Yes, thank you for having us. So um, let's just uh, go down the line again and just introduce, uh, tell us where you guys are from and we'll start with you. Um, I'm from Chuk and Yap. I, uh, I'm from Chuk, but I was born and raised here. Okay. Uh, I'm from a 
Republic of Pala. Nice. And I was born and raised here. Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, d definitely from different places on, uh, in, from here in Micronesia by playing for the same team. And so, um, I guess we'll, we'll start, we'll start with you. Um, tell us more about, um, and, cause you're a freshman, right? So how's it, how's it feel to be a freshman and be a part of the varsity team? Um, it's so good <laughs> cause ever since middle school, I always wanted to play in high school. Mm -hmm. So it was good playing with <laughs> good people, like good players like these guys. Okay. He's good herself, so it, like I just would yeah. <laughs> And then, and obviously, none other than the part of a, a championship team and the MVP. So, congratulations, MVP in the house. Um, tell us more. Were you part of the team since freshman year? Or uh, yeah, my freshman year was like COVID time, so like we didn't. I guess we didn't have much players. So yeah, I was happy to be a part of the varsity team, along with my older sister. She was also at the varsity. So, you, so four years. You're part of the varsity team for four years. So, how how has you how, how have you you've seen not the team only but yourself grown since freshman year until now, and then of course becoming the MVP. Oh uh, yeah, I I for sure I think that I've gotten like so much better because like I've had so many things to fix as a player, like going out of COVID and stuff. Uh, my coaches helped me a lot as a freshman. So like, I guess that really helped that maybe improve myself to come where I bet. Nice. And then, you know, junior race, right? you said you're a junior. So how, and you've been uh, the varsity since freshman or you just? Um, I just came up this year. This year, wow. So how, how what's the feeling like, you know, playing alongside uh, many amazing uh, players like these two here and of course the team? Good. I played with her since middle school, so it's nothing new to me. Wow. And, yeah. You know, I think one of the reasons why I wanted to get you guys here because it's something different, right? It's something we don't see every day. Uh, like I said, uh, I said in my opening f for this that, you know, it's such, you guys did not only inspire your generation, but you're inspiring my generation as well. You know, seeing, you know, uh, different faces from other islands. Because usually you don't see that, you know, years long, it's been a minute since we've seen, you know, people from for, from the FAS, you know, come up in, 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 in doing great things, especially in high school and, you know, winning two chap uh, two championships. And of course, being MVP, being the face of, of that team. So how does that feel for you guys to be a part of that? We'll start with you. Um, feels good. Feels, what's that way? Accomplished. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, because you're just a freshman, you still have three more years to go. You know, so I, I you know, she's she's getting out. She's going to go on and she's going like, to on to greater things. She's going to go to college. But then you, she leaves uh, young people like you guys take care of, of business so what does that make you feel i'm gonna miss you with that <laughs> yeah it's gonna be i know it's gonna be a little more challenging but i believe in my team nice okay and then i mean your mvp you already got the you know the title already you're on your way out of, of high school um you know what would you tell these two or what, what words of encouragement would you would you tell these two and the team don't change like because our team this is like a very different team from our previous years like being in varsity we're such a close like team we're like sisters we all annoy each other and help each other and we just encourage each other so like it's it's just a really nice environment to be it because like we're all like sisters you all help each other is that is that what makes it work the chemistry and everything nice and then you know you're on your way to you know next year your senior year obviously you're going to be part of the varsity, the varsity team um what are you guys looking to accomplish uh same thing like same goals from this uh this year and to keep it on for next year awesome um so you know let's talk about it uh people you know, what you know growing up being volleyball players i mean you, you probably have um, people that you look up to, people who inspire you. Let's start with you. Who who inspires you? And um, I'd say my dad. Yeah. He's been helping me ever since. So he really does inspire me. That's nice. I'd say my older sisters, because like they've been in sports, so like it it encouraged me to join sports too and like put a name for myself mm -hmm. and be out there too. That's awesome. And then you? I'd say my parents because 
They just help me throughout everything I do, like with sports and support me. Wow. Well, we're coming down to the last two questions. Uh, this one is, uh, you know, a message. If and I'll, I'll start with uh, all three of you guys. You know, you, you guys have accomplished something huge this year. Not one, but two titles. And then, you know, playing with uh, the other group. Um, with of, of course, you guys, all three of you didn't do it by yourselves. You guys played as a team, right? Uh, so what message would you guys have for, because like I said, you guys accomplished something big this year and now you're inspiring more um, students from the FAS to be more like you guys, to play like you guys and not only volleyball, but other sports and other academic uh, accomplishments, right? So what message would you guys have for other FAS um, students here in Guam? We'll start with you. The message is to go for it, like take the risk. Don't be scared. Okay. MVP? Um, I'd say to just, like, go show what you can do. Because we know there's a lot of people that have, like, the talent. And, like, they they know how to play. And they're good at it. But they just, they need some encouragement. So I hope we encourage some students to go out there and play. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'd say to reach for your dreams, I can see yeah. to reach for your dreams and don't let anyone judge you, um, how you play or how, what you want to do. Um, before I let you guys, uh, go any, anything you guys want to close with? Um, okay. <clears throat> oh, shout out to the team yeah. mm-hmm. and our coaches, our parents, and we share for keeping up with our team <laughs> we're one chaotic team yes but yeah we'd be nothing without our parents and nothing without our coaches and um and definitely thank you to all our supporters for being with us they are all our games and uh, most importantly to our uh, we want to thank god for helping us uh this season and our previous seasons and just Helping us and like giving us shape and encouragement to do our best this year. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show and congratulations once again. Thank you guys. And that's a wrap. We'll be back. Wow. What an inspiring sit down with these young individuals who are so talented. Thank you so much for not inspiring your generation, but also inspiring my generation to do better. Thank you guys so much. Guys, that pretty much wraps up the show, the One Micronesia Show, the holiday edition, and we'll see you guys on the next one. My name is Victorious, and I gotta say, peace.